Hey, welcome back Tri-5 Chevy enthusiasts. It's Kevin and today we're diving into the world of the Chevrolet 210, a true mid-range marvel that left its mark on the automotive scene in the 1950s. Get ready for a journey through time as we explore the iconic 210 and its role in shaping the classic Chevy revival. So buckle up and let's take a ride down memory lane. The Chevrolet 210 is a mid-range car from Chevrolet that was marketed from 1953 until 1957. It took its name by shortening the production series number 2100 by one digit in order to capitalize on the 1950s trend towards numerical auto names. The Chevy 210 line was situated between the entry level 150 and the upscale Bel Air and was available with the most body styles, trim options, engine and transmission combinations, and also color combinations. It could be ordered with every power amenity available from the Chevy brand or none, depending on the customer's preferences. Performance fans like the 210 for the potentially light body and powerful engine and transmission combinations. Thrifty customers adored the 210 because of its minimalistic potential and it replaced the Styline Deluxe model available in previous years. The 210 was discontinued after the 1957 model year to be replaced by the Biscayne. The 210 was actually the best-selling Chevrolet model during the 53 and 54 model years offering a balance of style and luxury appointments unavailable in the base 150 series, but it still was less costly than the glitzy Bel Air. 210s offered the widest choice of body styles for 1953, including a convertible, a sport coupe hardtop, two and four-door sedans, and four-door station wagons. Chevrolet reinduced the 210 sport coupe hardtop in the middle of the 1955 model year and also added a four-door 210 hardtop sport sedan for 1956. Neither achieved the sales of their Bel Air counterparts. However, since they were only about $100 cheaper than Bel Air's, which provided more luxury and premium exterior trim. Unlike the 150 series, 210s were always available with the same luxury options as the Bel Air, including the PowerGlide automatic transmission, power window lifts, and seat adjuster. The 210 Townsman was a top station wagon model offered in 1953, but the Townsman was moved up to the Bel Air series for 1954, only to return to the 210 for 1955. The lower-priced handyman station wagon, a four-door model in 1953 and 54, it became a two-door for 1955, 56, and 57. Both were joined by a nine-passenger Beauville four-door wagon in 1956 through 1957. In addition to their increased handling and performance improvements, several new safety features, including a crash-proof door lock, a padded dash, and optional seat belts were welcome improvement. The 210 had eight body styles with prices that ranged from $1,210 to $2,350. The Bel Air was offered in seven body styles, including the Nomad, Convertible, and a nine-passenger station wagon with prices that range from $2,070 to $2,600. Two years after its debut, Chevy wasn't done tinkering with the 210's mechanics. In the second generation, produced from 1955 to 1957, Chevrolet included a new chassis and a small block V8. The center door frame was beefed up for more safety, Brakes were 11-inch drums, and the 210 buyer was free to choose any powertrain option available. The ammeter and oil pressure gauges were changed to warning lights that year. And this was not the first Chevrolet to have a V8 engine installed. The first Chevrolet with a V8 engine was introduced in 1917, called the Series D, which was built for two years and was manufactured before Chevrolet joined General Motors. 
The six-cylinder engine had overhead valves, hydraulic valve lifters, a one-barrel carburetor, four main bearings, and delivered 140 horsepower at 4,200 RPM. The base V8 was a 265 unit with a hydraulic valve lifters, five main bearings, a two-barrel carburetor, and delivered 162 horsepower. A three-speed manual transmission with column-mounted controls was standard and overdrive was available on the manual transmission for an additional $108. Optional transmissions included a PowerGlide two-speed automatic for an additional $189. Also, additional options included a four-barrel Super Turbofire V8 with 9.25 to 1 compression and 205 horsepower. Also, a 225 horsepower dual four-barrel carburetor power steering, power brakes, power windows, 11-inch diameter heavy-duty clutch. Also came with a tool kit, compass, courtesy lights, door handle shields, dual electric wipers, plastic windshield glare shield, and outside sun visors were among the extensive list of available options. Standard equipment included two sunshades, nicer interior trim than the 150, with a two-spoke steering wheel with a horn ring, and ashtrays and cigarette lighters. Small hubcaps were standard and custom colored upholstery was optional. The 210 two-door sedan had a base price of $1,910. The two-door hardtop was priced at $2,065 and the four-door version was $2,115. The four-door pillarless hardtop was a new body style for 1956 the Delray Coupe listed for $1,970 and was outfitted with deep pile carpets and all vinyl upholstery. The two-door station wagon was priced at $2,215 and the four-door wagon at $2,260 and the nine-passenger four-door wagon was priced at $2,350. And if you decided you wanted the eight-cylinder engine added, it would cost you an extra $100 to the base price. The 56 Chevy 210 models were the Chevrolet name on its rear fender. They had chrome moldings around the windshield, side window sills, and back window, and more unique side trim with a single horizontal molding that swept downward towards the rear bumper end. Except for the Del Rey Coupe, the interiors had vinyl and cloth trim and vinyl coated rubber floor mats. In 1956, Chevrolet won the annual Pikes Peak Hill Climb, and Smokey Eunuch, driving a 1956 Chevrolet, set a 24-hour average speed record for American-built production cars at 101.58 miles per hour, soundly beating Chrysler's old record by nearly 12 miles per hour. And with its fine styling, many amenities, strong competition record, and legendary small-block V8, the Chevrolet line was a huge success for 1956 in all of its many available models and body style. Engine choices remained the same except they were now rated with higher power output. The 265 cubic inch V8 was available in three versions. The 235 cubic inch engine was rated at 140 horsepower with a 265 cubic inch unit rated at between 170 to 225 horsepower, and it was available at an additional cost. The 56 had a new unified build, no matter what the transmission. For 1957, the 235, 265, and the 283 engine was available. Power ranged from a 140 horsepower to over 280. New for 1957 was the optional 283 cubic inch small block V8 engine. There were three versions of this engine with conventional carburetors as well as a fuel injected option. The 210 shared the wedge shaped side trim with the Bel Air, but unlike the Bel Air, which had the wedge filled with an aluminum trim panel, the 210's wedge was painted either body color or top color with the optional two-tone paint package. It included a Chevrolet script mounted inside the wedge. The most popular 210 body style was the four-door sedan. The combined sales of over 737,000 210 models accounted for over 
47% of Chevrolet's total production. A year later, it continued to remain popular, accounting for 37% of Chevy's total production. Yet, it was discontinued at the end of the year to make way for its replacement, the Biscayne. While the 57 210 was available in seven different body styles, the 1958 Biscayne was either a two-door or four-door sedan, or you could get a six- or nine-passenger four-door station wagon. And that concludes our journey into the timeless Chevrolet 210. I hope you enjoyed this look into this classic Chevy. If you have any stories, memories, or insights about the 210, feel free to share them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and check out our website, ClassicChevyRevival.com, for more Tri-5 information. And remember, it's not just about driving. It's about driving and reviving. I'm Kevin, urging you to keep the passion alive. Remember to drive and revive. Oh.